a very good morning to one and all uh, we are very uh, delighted to welcome our resource person for today he is mr anirudh shinde senior manager sipla pharmaceuticals he is the alumnus of chemical engineering 2002 batch of pravara rural engineering college a very warm welcome to you anirudh shinde sir and thank you on behalf of the management staff and students of pravara rural education society for accepting our invite and joining us for this session today on introduction to the pharmaceutical industry we are very sure that your uh, immense expertise knowledge and experience will be very very useful to our students we are also thankful to mr sachin deute sir of uh, prec chemical engineering department for uh, organizing this session thank you so much sir anirudh shinde sir over to you i have uh, enabled the screen sharing option sir for you okay. so uh, looking forward to hearing from you sir over to you thank you okay first of all uh, thanks to the prec then the management staff and the participants uh, for the joining this session uh, everybody is getting my screen mam wo jo abhi recording karne wala hu na wo please ask the host to give permission to record okay 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 so uh, uh, mr sachin this screen is visible to everybody or uh, what is exactly you are getting my screen the screen is visible sir yes sir, yes, sir. screen visible. is visible please okay okay so uh, for the chemical uh, engineer perspective there are so many field uh, and uh, uh, majorly it includes the uh chemical industry then the uh shinde sir please unmute yourself by mistake it has got muted please unmute yourself okay, okay. so okay. my okay. sound is clear no okay first of all thanks to the prec then the management staff and the participants who have joined this webinar uh we are directly moving to the presentation prior to that chemical uh, engineer have many opportunities in various field like petroleum pharmaceutical chemical right now in it also as well as in design so we are just uh, concentrating in a pharmaceutical sector which is most growing sector in past 10 to 20 years so our objective of this web webinar and this pharmaceutical industry cannot be covered in uh, 30 or 40 minute or 1 hour so our first prime focus will be on just see the outlook of the uh, pharmaceutical industry and how it works uh, in a, a broad angle Okay. so first of all we should uh, have the knowledge of which are the key players in the indian markets as well as in a uh, uh, global market so uh, i think you people are aware or not i don't know but uh, pharmaceutical in industry is one of the top industry in a world that is we can say india is a capital of pharmaceutical industry out of 10 people in the world they are taking uh, medicine those are manufactured in india out of 10 6 medicines are manufactured in the india so it is a capital of india and where uh, that industry is working so many years so key players in the pharmaceutical in, uh, industry in india that is the sun pharmaceutical industry the key players having a huge volume of manufacturing and having a very good revenue and having market capitalization more than 50000 cr so 
that is not uh, i have uh, not presented here as a ascending order of their market capitalization and all these are the key, key players but sun pharma reddys lupin and sikla are the major players so uh, to uh, get the knowledge about the pharmaceutical industry we should have the knowledge of which are the key uh, businesses or steps in all in the pharmaceutical industry first one is the intermediate so i think we will move from uh, that uh, direct our uh, use product to the uh, back so we are using tablets injections capsules so these medicines how it is manufactured so this this is the end end use but prior to that to make it we require api that is called active pharmaceutical ingredients and prior to uh, it is a intermediates so uh, for to manufacture api we require intermediates and uh, if you see in the uh, below of it i have put over there what are the things required to make the intermediates so intermediate is concern we required to do we need to operations and we need processes on the raw materials then we can make a intermediate in a active pharmaceutical ingredient also the same we have to do the uh, unit operation and unit process on a, a api and in a formulation majorly unit operations is performed to make our formulations so uh, what are the unit processes and unit operations majorly involved that is not limited to this but these are the major one if you see the unit processes where we are doing the chemical change in the raw material uh, structure or its molecule so what are that uh, what are the reactions in hold majorly that are the oxidation grignard reaction cyclization reduction halogenation hydrogenation these are the key steps required to do on a raw material to convert material a into b then what are the unit operation that is performed in a uh, pharmaceutical industry to convert one material a into b it includes uh, distillation filtration crystallization drying size reduction and sieving these are the major unit operations uh, we have to perform and anyways if you want to do any unit operation we required machine or equipment so what are that so these are the some machines where i have just shown you in a, a actual their diagrams not a book pictures so first one that is the batch reactor so what is the purpose of batch reactor batch reactor anyway you are aware that reactions are performed in the batch reactor reaction can be performed into the plug flow reactor but pharmaceutical industry is concerned they are more uh, usability usability is the batch reactors why because the pharmaceutical products are very expensive and uh, their demand is very less as compared to the chemical industry for example uh, for one uh, one of the we need for the chemical industry it may manufacture yearly uh, 50000 metric ton per year so for the same uh, size of unit for the pharmaceutical it may manufacture max 100 metric tons per year so that is a uh, means quantity wise it is very less quantity required as a part of pharmaceutical so they are manufacturing in a batch to avoid the uh, major losses and five people are going to make more if a uh, demand is very less so they are uh, uh, make uh, they are using the batch reactor that is the selection of the reaction equipment so then uh, there are two types based on the material of construction construction moc we can say because certain reactions are uh, acidic and certain reactions are basic so for the basic reactions is concern they want to use a stainless steel reactor 
they cannot do basic reaction in the glass line reactors because we know that is it is incompatible when we have to perform a chemical reaction having the acidity then glass line reactors are used so the purpose of batch reactor is that to perform the reaction secondly uh, to perform the crystallization to perform the distillation to perform the extraction so these are the four unit operations is performed by the batch reactors in a pharmaceutical industry second one uh, anyways when you are just uh, put, uh, doing the reactions and then distilling it in, uh, distilling out the uh, undesired solvent and then crystallization in our desired solvent in that case anyways we need to filter that material because after crystallization we have two phases that is one is solid phase and second one is the mlr and any anyway we have to uh, separate it and for this separation purpose in an industry that popular equipment is a centrifuge the centrifuge uh, this picture you can see so over here you are uh, just getting this is a white colored some component and this is called the filter bag so purpose of this filter bag is to just retain a solid material inside and to pass away the mlr that is undesired component and we are getting the solid wet cake over there so that is the purpose of centrifuge now uh, next one that is the sparkler filter it is again the filter so uh, you are aware about that uh, the uh, charcoalization is a part of decolorization activity in the phar pharmaceutical charcoal have a good absorb absorption uh, ability so it can absorb the color impurities and it is a part of purification so over there centrifuge is not essential in a, such a case for separating it out charcoal from the uh, reaction mass uh, first of all i want to tell you oh, the, some some of the word what i am uh, uh, talking that are not uh, uh, in all in the book maybe so reaction mass means the when we are performing a, a reaction so what is the liquid mass that uh, that mass is called as the reaction mass so after reaction it has some certain color impurities where we are intentionally adding charcoal and we are giving certain time to get a uh, absorption of the color impurities on the charcoal and after this we need to separate it out and for the separation we are using the sparkler filter over we can get <laughs> get the clear filtrate and that charcoal is getting retained on, uh, in this machine this machine sparkler okay so somebody can ask question why then centrifuge cannot be used for the this particular filtration so anyways centrifuge can be used but the that charcoal having very less particle size about 20 uh, less than 20 micron itself so that filter bag don't have ability to retain that charcoal but sparkler have the ability to retain it because it uh, it is uh, not using a uh, that uh, filter uh, uh, bags so over there filter pairs are used that is from a cellulose having high thickness so that retaining can be possible in the sparkler okay so after we are getting the wet cake sorry you can ask the question in between also no issue hello if somebody uh, uh, have a doubt or you want to uh, some information regarding any uh, one of the topic he can um, just intermittently he can ask the question okay so moving uh, now next step after we are getting a uh, desired weight uh, material then definitely it is along with a solvent because we are isolated that material that is in a liquid phase so anyways that solvent will be the part of that solid and it need to be dry because right now we are achieved the material that is wet wet means that is with a solvent content so it need to dry 
for the drying perspective we need uh, uh, some dryers so see this is the fluid bed dryer there are so many dryers in the industry but popular is the fluid bed dryer then this is the ftd vacuum tray dryer rotocon vacuum dryer rotocon vacuum paddle dryer so these are the key dryers used in the industry so purpose of drying as uh, you know that is to remove the solvent from the wet cake or from the solid material so that is the purpose now uh, uh, there might be there might be uh, uh, you people that having the doubt that is why these are different dryers are used for the drying why not single dryer is used i cannot say that is uh, out of that four dryers which is best because all are best but based one situation some of the situation where fluid bed dryer is important can be used and some of the cases where uh, vacuum tray dryer becomes the prime prime dryer for the drying of that particular that depend on the nature of your material and and the drying conditions if some of the material having we want to dry at a lower temperature then we have to go for the vacuum drying that is the either rcvd or vacuum tray dryer but if you want to dry a material uh, and that material uh, having uh, not any uh, uh, temperature dependent uh, uh, activity which lead to the uh, decomposition of your product so in that case we go for the fluid bed dryer so oh, that is the selection criteria how to choose the dryers now after drying you are getting the material that is in dry form but that material is again crude that is not a usable it cannot be sent to the formulation to make the tablets to make the injectables we cannot it requires certain processing on this so further step is your milling or size reduction techniques it includes jet milling multi milling cad milling these are some popular mills used in the pharmaceutical industry again somebody have the doubt that why these mills are there that different mills are there because our particle requirement of our product if you have manufactured the product it have certain quality specifications what is it quality specification means we should have the quality of that particular material regarding your h uh, we can say that is the purity by hplc means how much percent your product is pure and how much impurity in your product secondly the criteria is your particle size how much particle size of your uh, api or your material so if some of the product having requirement more than 200 microns in micron that particle size is measured in the microns so if product having the requirement of particle size more than 200 microns then we can use a multi mill if it is less than it then we have to go for the cad milling and if you want a particle size less than 10 micron then we have to go for the jet milling now how fundamentally or principally they have the abilities for the multi mill having 200 micron below uh, 200 and less than 10 micron cad mill and then the uh, less than 10 uh, microns in a jet mill that string to that machine is getting from its principle of working jet mill it work on the principle of attrition where the uh, particles is getting bombarded on one another not only one another but on the machine parts or that uh, grinding plate so material is getting into the fine form cad mill having the same a principle that impact and cutting but having the rotation rpm of that particular uh, rotor 
that is more than 4000 micron uh, sorry 4000 rpms and multimill is concerned it having the rpm less than 3000 uh, uh, rpms so definitely you are getting that if more rpm and the more uh, sharpen edges of your blade and impact uh, blade or bitter then definitely your size reduction will be good okay so this is about the size reduction anyways after doing a side re reduction we know that we need to blend the material five blending is required to make it homogeneous that is the purpose and blender where we are getting the homogeneous material so after blending anyways we need to have the sieve the material means sieving sieving operation it is the last one where we need to sieve the material so any undesired material will come so that can be uh, isolated or any undesired particles which we have and that may uh, uh, leads to fail our product so that can also be uh, retained or isolated and after that the uh, next step is the uh, packing okay after this packing this is the last material for the api perspective it it is called as api active pharmaceutical ingredient and that material is the key raw material of formulations in a formulation that material is taken and from use of by using that api they are doing different formulations like tablets capsules injectables and uh, 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 so syrups so that is utilized for uh, the further uh, usage okay uh, one point you need to uh, 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 understand that uh, one thing that is very difficult or we can say the major in a pharmaceutical industry is a documentation that is called gmp good manufacturing practice in a chemical industry that documentation level is very less in a pharmaceutical industry we can say the heart of this pharmaceutical industry is a GMP. No one company will live without GMP because the pharmaceutical industry is making a life-saving drugs. And uh, we know the intensity of it because it is directly consumed by the human being. And if it is not manufactured as per the regulations, so it may lead to the death of the people or patients. So. It is highly legal and highly uh, uh, trusted for the documentation perspective. And that is strongly uh, followed in a pharmaceutical industry. So uh, then secondly, when uh, this equipment we are using, so definitely it having uh, have some do and don'ts. But uh, I think uh, this session is not relevant to it. But definitely machine have uh, certain uh, operations and that operation, how people will know, how they can either they have to put in their mind or they have to read. So anyways, the mind based working is not a part of pharmaceutical industry. That is everything should be written and it should be uh, when they are doing the activity, it should be documented. So for operate these machines, they have standard operating procedures sop they are calling sop for the reactor they have sop how to operate the reactor that procedure is defined in the that sop now uh, we are moving towards the what is the role of chemical engineer in a pharmaceutical industry so before that we should have to understand how the uh, pharmaceutical industry uh, having the major steps of their product development. We'll take a one example that is, uh, we want to just launch one product that is new one, that is not earlier manufacture. Right now we are, we are going to manufacture. So what are that steps? So that steps are, that steps are, first of all, industry uh, is doing the market survey. 
after market sur survey they came to know that uh, which product they want to need as per the we know the um, uh, rule of management if there is a demand in the market then then industry doing the supply if demand is not there so nobody can uh, make made the supplies so they are doing the survey after that they came to know that which product they can manufacture after that they are doing the cost evaluations market mein to demand hai lekin jo market ka price hai we need to have the uh, compensate that price along with profit so anyways they are doing the uh, cost evaluation after that they are doing the process selection now cost evaluation has been did then they are doing the that is the rough estimations cost uh, evaluation this is the primary cost evaluation after that they are selecting the process after selection they are selecting the technology which technology they want to use either their facility have that technology or not so that assessment is getting performed and after that they are doing the process development after that they have uh, which process they have selected they are again refining the process and they are developing the process for the manufacturing after that they are doing the piloting means uh, that process development in some some grams or 10 gram 20 gram 100 gram up to 500 grams up to that level they are doing after that that piloting is did on 1 to 10 kg basis that product is again uh, process means process is validated on a piloting basis about 1 to 10 kg so at this moment they are get came to know that uh, the actual price of the product if that price is not a viable then that product is again sent back for the process development and if not then that product cannot be manufactured further if it is a viable for the cost perspective process safety perspective then it is uh, taken for the next step that is after this for the commercial manufacturing before that they have to take fda permissions after that they have to do the process safety review at the uh, by, by considering the plant angles because right now we have the data with max 10 kg of the batch size now we have to move to the 200 kg 300 kg 1 ton so that is the huge volume for that process safety review is very important because there are certain unit operations are there so is it really uh, uh, operator friendly is there uh, that operations are safe is there uh, the facility we have that is suitable for this operation so that review is performed over there process safety review it, it includes majorly they have to do the hazards hazard operability then the okay so after that the validation is started validation means the commercial manufacturing of the uh, intermediates or api and after manufacturing it after manufacturing it quality evaluation is performed and then that material is supplied to the uh, market or to the formulations and then is performed and then again validated over there then other steps in all in this uh, scenario what are the uh, quality evaluation so i think at this moment is uh, okay so <clears throat> before that <clears throat> uh, anybody have any question regarding this thank you very much uh, shinde sir it was a wonderful session uh, now the forum is open for discussion anyone would like to ask any yeah. questions please go yes any students would like to ask questions please go ahead
to ask the question this is the open discussion uh, no question is good or bad or irrelevant you just want to ask the question you ask uh, sir yeah. uh, for working in the pharmaceutical industry uh, there is need of some skills can you tell please okay yeah uh, actually uh, skill is concerned definitely you are asked the right question but that skill development is uh, uh, prior to uh, operate on in the plant or in the uh, actual site uh, pharmaceutical industry they are doing the first of all training either that is 15 days or one month that is a part of their uh, training protocols so when you are recruiting anybody new freshers they are doing the training and after that training we need to do the job on site uh, and that is not to the fresher that is for the new uh, the uh, the employee he is joined from other organization he have having a good experience then also he has to do the training of that organization it is a compulsion but uh, prior to that what skill we require that is the interview skill if you have cracked the interview so no worry that training is performed by the, that organization or other courses are needed or not uh, no uh, no course is needed for to enter into the pharmaceutical industry but we should have the good uh, uh, that is the interview uh, knowledge how to face the interview what are the points to be discussed how to discuss how to uh, put your uh, views or opinion or answer the questions that only uh, that uh, skill we require okay sir thank you anyone have any other questions please students please feel free to ask questions uh, he is a alumnus from prora itself please feel hello, free hello sir i am uh, maru jurti from uh, b chemical am i audible sir yes rutik you are audible please go ahead ask the question uh, sir uh, uh, many students say that the pharmaceutical industry experience not counted in a core chemical and core chemical industrial experience not counted in a pharmaceutical so uh, why that experience not uh, consider while play giving job to the person okay uh, i am partially agree with you and uh, not also so uh, why i am uh, why uh, is it i will tell you uh, actually that pharmaceutical to definitely if you want anything or any personal we want to recruit so definitely if he is in a pharmaceutical industry so definitely priority is given to that guys but when the company have the need and in a market they are not getting the correct candidate or the correct database or knowledge oriented candidate so they can prefer to that chemical industry there are so many my friends so many colleagues they are shifted their career from chemical to pharmaceutical chemical and pharmaceutical to chemical so uh, this is not a right that may be case to case some of the case maybe some of the case it is not applicable okay so thank you Okay. Any more uh, questions, students? Please feel free to ask. And uh, don't hesitate uh, to ask the question. आप मराठी में, हिंदी में, इंग्लिश में आप बात कर सकता है. That language is doesn't matter. Our knowledge is important.
Uh, any question, student? Okay. Uh, Sindhi sir, I have one question. Sindhi sir. Yeah. I have Go one ahead. question. Uh, in terms please. of dryer, you can say first is uh, BD, then BTD, and another one is uh, only for tray dryer, na? TD. Hello. Uh, RC, RC, so rotocon vacuum dryer. <laughs> Hello. Uh, which criteria? Which criteria is required? I audible. Uh, no, sir. I think. Uh, Hello. Yes. Audible. Please put. Hello. Ah, uh, sir. Hello. Ah, Shinde sir. You audible. Ah, Shinde sir. Hello, I was not here. I think uh, he left the meeting by mistake, so most probably he'll rejoin. Sushi, Sushi. Ah, Hello. So, oh, what I uh, that, that question regarding in case of uh, uh, we call as loading a dryer, what criteria are required for uh, that material in case of VTD, tray dryer, or FBD? Yeah, you mean to say that is how you are choosing the dryers. Hmm, which type of dryer we can In say short. This, uh, that material is suitable for either huh. for material. Anirudh Shinde sir, are you there? Shinde sir, hello. I think my network or something. I think uh, some network issue is there, technical concern. Yes. Ah, sir. Yeah. Which criteria required? We can ah. So, uh, see, the selection, selection, see, selection of dryer that is depend on the, the drying parameters. So, suppose some of the some of the product that having the uh, sensitive for the temperature. So definitely we need to dry the material at a low temperature. And for this purpose, we have to take help of the vacuum. When we are vacuumizing any uh, solvent operation, so boiling point will get reduced. And it will help to just dry a product at a lower temperature. But when you want to dry at a higher temperature and in a less time, so definitely in that case, fluid wet dryer is used. Because in a fluid wet dryer, that is a adiabatic uh, in nature. So that your uh, heating source and uh, your material comes in the contact. So uh, that the mass transfer due to heating as well as mass transfer due to the diffusion itself happens. So two benefits in the fluid wet dryer. So drying is very fast. In a vacuum dry dryer, on, it's a non-adiabatic type dryer where your utility is not coming into contact with the, your material. So where only the uh, heat transfer driven drying takes place. So it will take more time, but uh, drying can be happen at a very less temperature. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And definitely, uh, I just want to say, uh, just okay, okay. No, please, share, please go ahead, sir. You wanted to share something? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think uh, uh, for the B candidate, especially uh, after uh, uh, completing their B, they should have to focus on the uh, uh, interview. Uh, how to crack the interviews? So that skill they should have to develop. We are not getting from any training and anything. We should have to practice yourself. We have to use the net source. We have to just uh, uh, know the questions, what questions they are asking. And we should have to keep in mind for the answering any question, we should have to have certain etiquettes for the uh, interview cracking. So it includes, we should have to talk specifically. We should have to 
speak loud but not uh, very loudly but it should be audible secondly we should have the confidence level and secondly we should have the basic knowledge of your uh, uh, your uh, academics and secondly we should have to talk those words that are we know very well because interviewer is asking question from your answers what questions and what words you are using on this he is asking the question then we have to just uh, mouth it out those words those we know very well if you are doing that three four steps so definitely interview can be cracked thank you very much sir for this wonderful session and your uh, uh, expertise has really been useful for our students uh, my dear students uh, i have shared in the chat window the feedback link for this session I request all of you to kindly fill the feedback without fail so that we come to know uh, what are your viewpoints about this and what else do you require uh, what other topics you would like us to arrange in association with alumni so anirudh chinde sir on behalf of uh, pravara rural education society pravara rural engineering college and pravara rural uh, education society alumni relations cell we are extremely thankful to you for this wonderful session and we hope to have such sessions with you in future as well sir thank you so much for sparing your time sindhe sir okay thank you. hello hello yes. sindhe sir tambe sir i am tambe sir asking one question hello can i ask yes yes tambe sir okay. please go so suppose for this go year ahead, our uh, student would like to join in your organization as a sipla so what are the prerequisites required for the students uh actually uh uh, uh this prerequisites candidates anyways we have also taken interview over there and so many candidates they are joining to uh, that sipla also so but uh, uh, what i find during the interviews so that uh, in that scenario i just 5 minute back i just talk on this so interview that what will be the interview tickets uh, uh, that need to be improvised in the students and secondly uh, anyways in the pharma industry we don't want any uh, that courses and all just we uh, we want uh, their uh, confidence level their knowledge base and secondly their uh, 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 iq so when you are asking question that is not uh, any candidate cannot be selected based on knowledge it is the combination of so many things it includes the, their knowledge their iq their presence of mind their uh, 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 interaction ability and um, their uh, uh, we can say uh, their confidence level so on this uh, based on it and their body language also because uh, chemical engineers are generally preferred in a manufacturing and technology transfer as well as process safety if and major chunk is the manufacturing or they have to lead a team so they should have the leadership quality they should have the good interaction and that confidence level so that are also major points during the consideration of any uh, candidate during entry specifically they should focus on which subject of chemical engineering generally uh, now uh, it's depend on, uh, on the uh, interviewer but when i am just doing the interview definitely what i uh, spoken the words that is relevant to the uh, uh, apart from the knowledge so uh, that things i am just uh, assessing and secondly heat transfer mass transfer unit operations so these are the major uh, uh, areas where majorly question is asking and one thing uh, first two three questions are relevant to uh, its personal uh, details so anyways that answer they should have to uh, do very confidently so their start will be uh, just will be good and the further question they uh, they are uh, getting uh, answered by very well but one thing is that uh, they should have to uh, one point i have um, uh, seen in many interviews they are putting or just uh, answering uh, the uh, uh, the question in that time they are uh, just uh, uh, answering with those words they are not aware and the question is asked on that 
words only and they are not getting answer to that word they are they are fundamentally uh, weak in uh, those words because they don't know in detail but then also they are uh, putting this so uh, that uh, we can say that is the iq or we can say the common sense they have to keep in mind okay sir thank you for the wonderful session thank you once again and uh, uh, we request all of you to stay safe and stay healthy thank you yeah yeah thank you ma'am thank you all participants participant and thambesar duty sir thank you shilde sir thank you ma'am